we'll be starting the session now uh, this is a sixth session uh, on our ongoing international learn from the masters session by dr neto rosatelli and the topic is taming the heart cataract so this session began with uh, an uh, initiation from dr atul dhawan from asg who invited various speakers from uh, various parts of the world. It started with speaker Dr. Sengul Ozdek, uh, then Professor Ramsey, who taught about ILM flap techniques, uh, then uh, Dr. Barbara Parolini and Zofia Anna Novaraka. And lastly, the last session was by Dr. Ahmed Salam on art of scleral buckling. We have with us uh, Dr. Neto Rosatili. Uh, who has a medical degree uh, and from the Faculty of Medicine, Rubito Prieto University of Sao Paulo. Uh, he did his ophthalmic residency training at the clinical hospitals of uh, Ribeiro Prieto uh, and a master's uh, degree from the same place. Uh, he did his private practice from 1990 to 2018. Now he also works for the Brazilian public health system. Uh, he is a mentor for many surgeons uh, and is currently mentoring uh, in the Department of Ophthalmology, Paulista School of Medicine, Federal University of Sao Paulo. He is also a chairman of Brazilian chapter of ISMSIC. He is a specialist consultant at Alcon. He has a YouTube channel uh, with more than 250 videos and more than 7,000 subscribers, and the numbers keeps growing. It's a pleasure to have Dr. Neto Rosatelli on this forum. Uh, we also have with us uh, Professor Rajesh Sinha, sir, who is currently working as Professor of Ophthalmology in the Cornea Cataract and Refractive Surgery Department, RP Center, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Uh, he has done his DNB, FICO, FICLE, and FRCS. He also done his fellowship from University of Washington, USA. He has more than 325 publications uh, and three textbook along with four educational books and manuals. He has held various position uh, in prominent organization, which is All India Ophthalmic Society, uh, as a joint secretary, uh, as a joint uh, chief organizing secretary. He has, he has been invited to various instruction courses and workshop and ha has more than 325 index publications. We also have with us Dr. Pratyus Ranjan, He's a, a consultant at ASI Hospital Varanasi, uh, also medical director at Varanasi Center. He did his postgraduate in ophthalmology from Sabdarjang Hospital, New Delhi. Uh, he has been trained at Freeman Hospital, Newcastle Kingdom. Uh, also, he did his, uh, did his short term stints at uh, AIMS New Delhi and Sitapur Eye Hospital, Uttar Pradesh. He has experience in more than 35,000 cataract and refractive surgeries along with glaucoma lasers and oculoplastic surgeries. He has his own uh, techniques, which has been patented and developed uh, by Dr. Pratyush himself. He does topical MICS, cartwheel chop. Also, he has Ranjan MICS marker uh, and a cartwheel chopper as well. He has worked as a consultant ophthalmologist and medical superintendent at Shaheed Bhagat Singh Hospital for more than two and a half years. Uh, and it is one of the leading centers in the Western Uttar Pradesh for doing more than 15,000 cataract surgeries annually. He also runs an NGO in addition to this, the Shuka Foundation. We also have with us uh, uh, a very dynamic Dr. Uh, Manas Nath. Uh, he, he is working at a cataract surgeon, refractive surgeon at uh, ASG Kolkata. Uh, he was former chief of cataract services in Arvind Eye Hospital, Pondicherry has a vast experience of 17 years and has done more than 25,000 surgeries across different spectrum. He's proficient in the art of surgical management of all types of cataract surgeries. Uh, so it's a pleasure to have a very esteemed panel of guests with us uh, on this very, very common and very important topic. Over to Dr. Neto. Thank you. I must say that I am very glad to be here among so 
uh, much distinguished colleagues and I, I love to discuss any kind of uh, topic or theme around cataract surgery and I hope that after my presentation we have a, a, a much available time to discuss and I encourage every one of you who's watching and also the panelists of course to, to bring questions and discuss so that uh, we all learn in this uh, wonderful meeting. So you can share your presentation. Okay. Please confirm, is it running? It's not visible, sir. Yeah, it's visible now. Okay. Let me just move the, the bar from where it is because it's in the way. Okay, hello, my friends. It is an honor and a pleasure to be here in this meeting sharing experience with you. I thank Dr. Pratyush Ranhanjan and Dr. Kushik Tripathi for the kind invitation. There are many difficult and challenging situations in cataract surgery, and this list shows only a few of them. But we're going to show, uh, to talk about, uh, to discuss the first one, the hard nucleus. I decided to present here three different unusual hard nucleus fracturing techniques that I use and that may be useful, helpful for, to you. Some general tips on approaching hard cataracts will be given also. Hard cataracts are probably the most common challenging cases faced by the cataract surgeon, and the challenge is greater in the inverse proportion to the surgeon's experience. To make things worse, a hard nucleus is frequently accompanied by other difficult features or situations. How so? Well, you know, like a McDonald's value meal, hard cataracts love to come together with a compromised zonio and also a small pupil. This is a favorite combo at the Mac cataract menu. Throw in a bad corneal endothelium, a shallow anterior chamber, and a deep set eye, and you're in for a three ride. But there are ways to make peace with Ronald. There are many aspects the surgeon must be attentive to when dealing with hard cataracts. Assessing corneal endothelium status and ensuring its protection is essential because a great amount of ultrasound energy is used. Surgical time is often considerable and stray nucleus pieces may hit the endothelium during surgery. The posterior capsule is at greater risk of rupture, as in most cases, it is already detached from the anterior hyaloid and frequently is able to come forward and form folds. It, as hard cataracts are most common in older patients, compromised zonules are a frequent finding. So use of zonules-free stress-free uh, stress techniques is advisable. Finally, fracturing of the dreaded stubborn posterior plate should be achieved appropriately. Most surgeons commonly approach hard cataracts by using the traditional phaco chop technique, also called direct chop, or by employing pre-chopping techniques with help of pre-chopper instruments and other devices. But I'll show here three different approaches I safely and successfully use to tackle especially hard cataracts. First one is the submarine chop. This technique was developed by my dear friend Pradeep Mohanta from India. In this technique, the difficult initial fracture is made through the progression of the phaco tip 
inside the nucleus, making a tunnel using the ultrasound. At the same time, the second instrument keeps the nucleus still. This technique has this fundamental difference from the FACO chop technique. It is the tip of the, the FACO uh, that advances, not the chopper. After achieving the initial nucleus division, nucleus management is performed as in usual chopping techniques. So after the routine surgical steps, the phacal tip is buried deep along the proximal margin of the capsular axis. And while the long blunt chopper hugs the equator of the nucleus, the tip advances toward the tip of the chopper, making a deep tunnel. Fracture is easily achieved, including this challenging posterior plate. Note that the chopper remains stationary, only supporting the nucleus. It is the phacal tip that moves. The complete vision into two heminuclei is ensured, and then the subsequent steps of fracturing and demulsifying the nucleus fragments are performed. The machine parameters used in the tunnel are the same as those used in the management, management of the fragments. This technique is capable of fracturing even the hardest nuclei. So it's a pleasure to introduce Dr. Rajesh Sinha, sir, uh, who has joined us recently. So uh, sir is a professor at uh, ophthalmology in Ames, New Delhi, and uh, has guided so many students across India. Uh, pleasure to have you, sir. Sir, please continue. Thank you. Welcome, sir. This is a very hard nucleus. Please notice how the phaco tip enters the, near the proximal axis margin and progresses inside the nucleus to meet the cheap tip of the chopper. Don't bother if the sleeve gets crumpled. I don't expose it too much for a reason I'll discuss in a moment. I consider it important to ensure that complete nucleus division is achieved before proceeding. I regularly use the submarine chop in not so hard cases, also because of its efficacy and efficiency, allowing me not to depend too much in high vacuum settings to achieve fracturing. Again, I ensure complete division on each fracture before proceeding. In here, I'll show why exposing the tip just a little is beneficial. The sleeve often enters the tunnel and forces separation of the pieces and the cracking happens spontaneously. In extreme zoom with a good red reflex, we can better appreciate the mechanics of the technique. Again, the phaco tip enters near the proximal axis margin as it is shown. Notice the tip of the, uh, the chopper position to stabilize the nucleus. The phaco tip then progresses deeply inside the nucleus to meet the tip of the chopper and the fracture is achieved. This cross section of the lens illustrates what happens in the submarine chop. The chopper embraces the lens nucleus. The phaco tip enters near the proximal capsular axis margin. This is a very important point. And advances deep into the middle of the nucleus towards the end of the chopper.
This is the tunnel path that the tip makes inside the nucleus. And now the second technique, the Jacobovitz chopper. Sergio Jacobovitz from Brazil has been developing this instrument for about 20 years. The chopper features a front cutting edge with a blunt notch on the inner side of the band that can be used to hold the capsular axis margin away during use. Sergio's original technique uses two identical choppers that enters the nucleus close to the capsular axis margin in opposite directions and meet each other, cutting the nucleus in half. The technique I'll show here is different from Sergio's original technique. I developed it for using very hard nuclei. Using only one Jacobovitz chopper instead of two, pre-fracturing of the nucleus is achieved by the cutting or cleaving action of the chopper inside the nucleus. At the same time, a second instrument holds the nucleus in place. Remember that the Jakobovitz chopper is a front cutting action instrument. <laughs> the long chopper enters under the anterior capsule and hugs the equator of the nucleus, while the Jakobovitz chopper enters near the axis margin and travels inside the nucleus towards the chopper. The two heminuclei are then divided in the same way. Refracture with the Jakobovitz chopper is very effective, breaking the posterior plate even in extremely hard cataracts. The complete division of the nucleus into four quadrants is done without the use of ultrasound. Emulsification of the quadrants is carried out with the surgeon usual parameters. The third technique uses the ultra chopper, which is an instrument that was invented by Dr. Dr. Luis Escaf from Colombia in 20, uh, 2006. It is an ultrasonic knife that effectively cuts nuclear substances with control. It is actually similar to any phaco emulsification needle, but with the tip flattened and angled with a downward curve that together with the torque energy behaves like an ultrasonic scalpel. Two suction holes are located at the top of the flattened segment. The ultra chopper is only used for the previous division or prefracture of the nucleus. After the fracture is achieved, the tip is changed to a normal uh, phaco tip to proceed with the emulsification of the nucleus pieces. The pre-fracturing is accomplished through the cutting action of the ultra chopper using ultrasonic energy. After division, the nucleus pieces are emulsified using a standard phaco tip and the routine machine parameters the surgeon favors. So in a similar way of the other techniques, the long chopper enters under the anterior capsule and holds the equator of the nucleus and the ultra chopper enters at the proximal margin of the axis and progresses cutting the nucleus in the direction of the chopper. Uh, uh, now we're using ultrasound energy. The two heminuclei are divided and the subsequent divisions are made in the same fashion. I usually, usually division into four pieces is enough, but in here I made a division into 80 pieces for demonstration purposes. It is not a, a very hard nucleus, but this uh, instrument is extremely effective even into cut, in cutting uh, complete, uh, very, uh, let's say, negro cataracts. I'll give now some special tips for the nucleus fragments emulsification time. First one, make a large axis, preferably a 5.5 or even larger. 
A small axis will make hard nucleus management very difficult, posing the risk of a radio axis margin tear. Replace dispersive OVD as often as it is needed to protect the corneal endothelium. A good indication as to when it's necessary is given by the sentinel bubbles. The continued presence of small air bubbles under the cornea indicates that the OVD endothelium protective layer is not yet washed out. The chopper should be used in protective maneuvers during phacal emulsification, preventing stray nucleus fragments from hitting the endothelium, protecting the posterior capsule by holding it down when surge occurs, etc. Nucleus fragments chip control is achieved by use of adequate machine parameters and careful foot switch work, ensuring good followability and lowering total ultrasound emission. Lastly, don't ever forget that SICS is in hard cataracts is usually safer than FACO. What are my thoughts on cataract surgery? It is something extremely personal, meaning that each surgeon has almost an almost unique way of operating from the handling of the instruments to, to the way to approach a particular case. That is why it might be reproducible between different surgeons or definitely not in some cases. It can be said that there are as many FACO techniques as there are surgeon, meaning that each surgeon has his or her personal one, which can be an adaptation from existing techniques or a completely new one. It becomes clear then that there is no best FACO technique. That's something very personal for each surgeon. By refining techniques and achieving proficiency in surgery, the surgeon can achieve what can be defined as art in the sense that it is the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, but not only in a vision form as art is commonly defined, but in a functional way as well. It is very beneficial to be open to experimenting, exper experimenting with different techniques with perseverance, if some technique is being successfully used by some surgeon, it is worth considering incorporating it into your surgical armamentarium. One should take the opportunity to learn from other surgeons' experience and also mistakes. That is why events like this one and many others are a very important way to share experience and everyone can learn. The surgeon needs to be versatile and master several techniques to be able to deal with different types of cataracts in the best possible way, safely and efficiently, and not be limited to just one fracturing technique. I have many videos of these three hard nucleus techniques on my YouTube channels and many other techniques also. Please take a look. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Neto, for a wonderful presentation uh, Thank you. on the newer techniques that you adopt. Uh, we have with us Dr. Uh, Rajesh Nasser, Professor Rajesh Nasser, uh, Dr. Uh, Pratyush Ranjan, and Dr. Manas Nath for their expert comments. Professor Rajesh Nasser. Uh, thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to share the same dais with Dr. Nito. Zatili, we have uh, shared the dais on a couple of occasions uh, recent in recent past, and I'm a great fan of his techniques of uh, you know handling uh, hard nucleus and various techniques of chopping and all that. I think uh, the presentation that you made, uh, Dr. Neto, it was a complete presentation as far as, you know, handling hard nucleus is concerned. I mean, you have shown all the 
difficult scenarios. And uh, for us, it's really important because in this part of the world, we do get a lot of cases with very hard nuclei. And uh, such a wonderful uh, uh, presentation. I, I'm sure, uh, Ganesh, uh, you must have kept a recording of his presentation as an archive so that, uh, you know, even if uh, there are so many people who have joined in and who have seen this, uh, the wonderful techniques, but there may be some who may not have joined because of some emergency, some reasons, so they can see it later. So but that will be a great learning experience. Uh, Absolutely, sir. We have uh, the recording with us. Uh, Dr. Prachu, sir, your thoughts on uh, the techniques uh, that sir showed? Mm -hmm. Dr. Nito's techniques are all very uh, wonderful to watch. Delightful surgeries he do. Very excellent recording system and editors he has. And definitely, uh, I mean, no doubt those techniques are helpful. I would just like to add, probably SICS, as he mentioned, that SICS is a better technique in dark, dark brown, or sometimes black cataracts we get. So the cornea is very pristine next day, even if, uh, even if it's very hard cataract. So apart from FACO, SICS also in hard cataracts. And of course, these techniques are really new. I have, for the first time, I've seen that Alcon uh, pre-chopper. It's really interesting. I, I, I will try to get one so that I can use it on my hard cataracts. Thank you so much, Dr. Nito. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think the, the reason that I brought uh, three yeah. different, th these three different FACO techniques is that they allow for a, a very uh, efficient, uh, FACO uh, nucleus division with uh, with little or no ultrasound use in the case, for example, of the Jakobovich chopper. And when ultrasound is used for the division, it is uh, uh, emitted inside the nucleus, which dampens most of the energy. And uh, of course, uh, two of them use devices that are not uh, easily, let's say, achievable. One is the Jakobovich chopper. There is one, uh, two manufacturers that make this chopper in the world. One is uh, in Brazil, is Facom, but it, uh, as I, uh, um, let's say, uh, I, I know that they don't ship overseas. And uh, the other one is Gilder from Germany. And it's a one, that's the ones that I, I have. It was the, the, the first one that they were making. And it's a wonderful and beautifully finished instrument. It's amazing how tiny and how uh, extremely the, 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 the cutting edge is extremely sharp and it's uh, very easy to cut this, uh, this very hard cutters. Of course, uh, all these techniques uh, demand some experience, but that th this can be built on uh, on a, a progressive uh, a way for the surgeon to be able to uh, become proficient with them. I think that uh, uh, surely the technique that I think most surgeons will be uh, able to, let's say, become proficient faster is the is Pradik Mohanta's submarine chop. It is, it doesn't, uh, need any special instrument you don't need to change any FACO parameters when you're doing it and it's a fair it's not a difficult uh, technique to to uh, learn the only thing that uh, the way i show it, it uses a, a long blunt chopper so it's uh, it uh, it's used it, it's a uh, fashion like a, a horizontal chopping techniques but for example pradeep itself uses a very small chopper in a vertical fashion. It's doable in the same way. So uh, to, to perform it the way I do, you need to have, to, to have a, a long chopper of at least uh, two millimeters in length. In this way, you are able to crack any hardness, um, a very hard nucleus, you don't have any difficulty in doing it. 
And uh, the last technique I show it, um, nowadays uh, you can't, uh, uh, you can't purchase the, this chip. Alcon was making it for some years and they stopped at, I think about five years ago, but I'm in recent contact, uh, in constant contact with Dr. Luis Scaff from Colombia. And he recently told me that he, uh, he got the, 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 the instrument patent back and he's going, he's, he's starting to produce it. And, uh, it's a uh, um, it's a very it's not difficult technique. It's uh, let's say some surgeons uh, are scared by the look of the instrument. It it looks like a sickle, mm -hmm. and you say, "Oh my God, how I'm going to use that?" But it's 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 not as it seems. It's it's small. It's just two point five millimeters. So if you if you could let's say uh, make it. Uh, go vertically into the nucleus it won't reach the posterior capsule so it's uh, if it's, you can uh, show it again sir and safer than it looks but let's let's wait if the the, the production of it uh, is restarted uh, because it's a very very uh, uh, um, effective instrument it cuts in nucleus like butter and i say it's the surgeon's revenge against hard nucleus you it's a very sex uh, satisfying surgery <laughs> so if, if you can show that uh, video again it would be very nice for the people who have oh. joined it a little later yes that yes part yes again. i have another one which is a little longer so i can and can show it please tell me when i i i, I should do it okay i don't uh... you can you can now sir you can share okay that now. okay let me find. Meanwhile, it. Dr. Manas, your comments, sir. Hello. Uh, it's always great to uh, watch Dr. Nito's uh, videos and presentations. And he has explained everything uh, the way uh, one should proceed with the cataract surgery. And I always used to uh, tell all the fellows, those who are learning and all, that uh, cataract surgery is uh, like a chessboard. Uh, all your steps. Uh, starting from the beginning to end should be accurate and should be performed accurately because if one step is wrong, your subsequent steps will definitely be wrong. And like hydro dissection is also very important in uh, brown cataract because uh, uh, there is very less space below the cataract and uh, it should be gentle. Make sure that the nucleus is uh, freely mobile and before proceeding with uh, the surgery. And uh, uh, like when the IC is filled with viscoelastics and all, uh, immediately don't start. This is for the fellows, so those who are learning, uh, immediately should not start the FECO because it can lead to a uh, wound burn because small chips of the cataract can mix with the viscoelastics and it may clog the FECO tip. Before starting the FECO, make sure that little bit of viscoelastic is removed. I have one question for Dr. Uh, Nito, like uh, uh, how do you manage uh, like brown cataracts with the uh, uh, shallow chamber like do you use any uh, vitreous tap or uh, IV mannitol to shrink the vitreous uh, before proceeding, proceeding with hard cataracts with shallow chambers and usually well congratulations on your uh, considerations I think it's uh, uh, you, you said some things that I, 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 I didn't mention and very important things and uh, hard cataracts are like you said uh, um, let's say a special situation where the surgeon must be prepared and must, uh, in a, a more rigorous way, comply with some FACO, let's say, uh, directives to achieve a good result. Because if not, uh, and that's what I, I was uh, commenting uh, on one of the slides, please go. SICS because SICS for beginner surgeon in in a, in a, in a very hard cataracts are safer, are more controllable, and I, I think it's a, 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 a it's a technique that should not be forgotten. The let's say in India, most surgeons are very proficient in SICS. That is not the case on the rest of the world. Um, I could say uh, safely say that in Brazil, less than 50 surgeons know how to perform SICS. And we have 20,000 ophthalmologists in Brazil. 
It's a very high number, yeah. but only about that 50 at most know how to perform. The uh, people uh, of thalmologists in Brazil perform when they're, they're going manual cataract surgery, they do um, extracapsular cataract surgery with limbo incision. So uh, I think we are in, uh, some, let's say, 25 years back in, <laughs> in manual, surgery, manual cataract surgery technology. So this is not acceptable, and it's very difficult to uh, encourage Brazilian surgeons to learn SICS, and I use uh, SICS a lot. It has saved many times, and in many cases, I, uh, let's say, I use it in heart cataracts because I am uh, completely confident that it will give a very, uh, a wonderful result. But Returning to your previous question in, in very shallow anterior chambers. I think it's very rare for me to, to have the need to, to do a vitreous step. I, uh, let's say, do a, a pars plana uh, uh, opening and uh, take out a little vitreous before proceeding. This is a very uh, effective technique for uh, making the anterior chamber deep, and I use it uh, mostly in cases of nanophthalmos or very short eyes, but sometimes I resort to that because uh, it's a, a hard cataract, a shallow anterior chamber, and usually accompanied by a small pupil is a very challenging case. So I think it's very uh, beneficial for all surgeons to be uh, uh, let's say familiar with this technique and perform because it's very, it's not difficult, it's very, it's easy in fact, and it provides a very good uh, environment for a safer uh, surgery in harder cataracts because the problem is that in harder cataracts you have a very long ultrasound exposure time for the endothelium. So it's very important to be far away and to when we're doing that, we you achieve space in the in the safe zone to safely uh, uh, perform the fake the the, the nucleus emulsif emulsification, and never forget to replace OVD. Uh, let's say I usually replace looking at the sentinel bubbles if they're going to the bubbles that stay under the, the corneal endothelium. If they are washed away, it's a sign that the OVD is getting uh, aspirated and so I replenish. But usually uh, replacing OVD disperses OVD, OVD uh, after each quadrant emulsification is a good measure to maintain a protective layer. And uh, so in, in, in shallow anterior chambers, I usually don't need to perform a, a vitro step, but uh, I, I do it sometimes. Um, I would like to uh, bring to attention the need to, uh, let's say, uh, many, many, many surgeons ask me about my phaco settings and uh, uh, I use a machine, I use Alco machines, which has torsional and longitudinal ultrasound. So from, for some techniques that I show it, the ultrasound, the ultra chopper and the submarine chop, when you're using ultrasound to make the, let's say, the path into the nucleus, never forget to give some time or to, let's say, do it in a nice step and way to allow time for the tip to cool. If not, you will have a corneal burn. In the, on, the, on these two techniques, I mostly use uh, oscillation, uh, the osseo uh, ultrasound, the, the, the oscillating tip, so the, the torsional ultrasound. So I have no problem in causing corneal burns, but if you're using a machine that only has longitudinal ultrasound, you have to keep that in mind. So, because sometimes the, 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 the length of time that you will be uh, need to uh, achieve the fracture is a, a significant and you should not go uh, in a, let's say, in one step, like when you're performing some trenching technique, the, 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 uh, 
uh, well, let's say the 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 reasoning is the same and the the FACO set the machine settings to use really uh, are, are very let's say you can uh, use your usual settings that for example you use when you're in most you most find the fragments you need a little uh, ultrasound uh, power in the submarine chop to achieve uh, nucleus penetration. You don't need too much vacuum, but uh, you don't need to change a special parameter to make the, 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 the submarine chop a tunnel or in the case of the alcohol neutral chopper uh, to, to achieve the fracture. It, uh, uh, just a little ultrasound in the case of the ultra chopper, you, you achieve a nucleus cutting. Dr. Neto, uh, yeah. just wanted to ask you that some people uh, uh, use cold BSS if the uh, if it's a very hard cataract. So what's your uh, choice? Whether you use cold BSS or you don't? I, I, I've I have never tried it, and uh, it has some. Uh, let's say uh, the reason for that is a logical one. I don't know if it makes much difference. I. I remember that some years ago, I, I, I saw an article showing that not much different in endothelial cell count uh, loss or uh, uh, let's say post-operative inflammation was too different. Uh, I think it's not easy to, to, to uh, let's say in most settings or practice or routines, to be able to, let's say, provide a, a, a very cold BSS uh, uh, all the time. I don't know how the setup is made. If you just keep it on the, on, on in a very low temperature in the refrigerator and take it out only at the time that you're going to use. But uh, I don't know if it, uh, how, how it is done, but I, I have never experienced that. I don't know if anyone on the, uh, on this meeting has, I would like to hear about it too. Uh, no, actually I have also not used it and I've, uh, you know, some early, uh, a few years back, it was more into practice, but now with the advent of these newer machines wherein the wound burn is uh, not uh, that commonly seen. So uh, I don't think many people are now uh, using it, but yes, there are some who advocate. So I just thought maybe you have an experience of that because I personally also don't use cold uh, BSS uh, any anymore. Initially, I had tried in a few cases, and then I, I don't use it anymore for last last few years. I've not been, I haven't used it. So I just thought maybe some experience. Yes. Another, I, what I, I, I yeah. What is your cutoff like? Uh, when would you go for an SICS and when would you like to continue with a FACO uh, in a hard nucleus? Oh, it uh, mostly the two, uh, the two most common reasons that I go SICS are a very low endothelial count or a when I see that the corneal endothelium is already failing, you have uh, uh, already have some corneal edema, et cetera and a, let's say, a loose on. If you have a compromised on it's very, uh, it's risky to do FACO in a hard cataract. And uh, this is something that we, sometimes we discover only when we are inside the eye, let's say, when you insert the FACO probe and we're doing raxis and then you see that the nucleus is mobile. And so in these cases, I usually avoid going FACO. I, let's say, um, I'm not, uh, uh, I, I can uh, say that I, my proficiency in SICS is uh, far from the proficiency that I see in, in, in many Indian surgeons. And so I, uh, uh, let's say, uh, I really, I'm, 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 I'm really more at ease doing FACO. So I think that I can safely say that I should do more SICS in hard cataracts. I don't do it because uh, in some cases I, I feel that I am more comfortable with FACO, but 
if I would think more rationally or logically, SICS would be a better option and I don't use it. But where I do sometimes is, and that's the way that I try to, this is a, a, a way that I used to convince some colleagues of mine to do SICS is when you're unsure if you're going to be able to do FACO, do before you do anything on the FACO surgery, uh, do the SICS tunnel, but don't open it. So you have already a tunnel done, ready for you to use it if you need it. And then you go uh, on other location, on our site and do your FACO. If you need, you just close your FACO incision and convert it in a very, let's say, appropriate way because it's very difficult for me at least to perform an SICS tunnel when the eye is already open where uh, it already has a phaco incision so sometimes I do like that and uh, in some cases I use it some cases I don't have the need to use the SICS uh, tunnel so uh, this is uh, a, a way that I do to ensure that I'll have a way out if a uh, FACO is, uh, uh, let's say, I'll not be able to do it. But in most cases, if I'm, I'm, I'm very unsure, I go straight to SICS and that's, uh, it's okay. I have some difficult doing performing SICS in small pupil cases and I really don't have doing that in FACO cases, that's, I like to say, I, I think this is one of the reasons that I mostly go FACO in these cases instead of doing SICS. I have some difficult getting the nucleus out. I think it's just uh, that uh, I had not have much practice in manual cataract surgery, uh, you know, uh, let's say recently, because when I when I did residency, when I started doing cataract surgery in the 80s, it was extracapsular cataract surgery. And I did a lot of my uh, uh, extracapsular surgeries doing scleral tunnel, but it was a different way to do it uh, comparing to SICS. We did nucleus fragmentation like the Blumenthal technique. And then I, 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 I switched it to FACO and uh, uh, for a long time, I did not perform many manual cataract surgeries, but that's the way. Uh, I think there is a, a very good question on the chat. I would like to address that because uh, I, I would like to take the opportunity to comment on something that I said on the presentation. There is a, com a, a question, uh, is there a chance of PC rent due to a sharp lens fragment? Yes, there is, there is. Some nucleus, well, well of course, when we, we, we going, go fragmenting them, it's uh, all, almost all fragments are shaped like a wedge. So if they, they uh, depending on the way that they, they, they tumble or they turn inside the, the the, the capsular bag, of course, they can uh, cause a, a, a rupture in the posterior capsule. This is most common when the fracture is not complete. That's why I was stressing that. Make sure always in hard nucleus, when you're doing a nucleus fracture, make sure that the fracture is complete before proceeding, because if not, when you're moving, in the fragment, when you are addressing the fragment, uh, the, 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 the nucleus piece that you're going to, to, to cut, the, there are some fragments attached and sometimes they move in an unwanted way and they cause rupture. So I think this is something that when I'm doing hard nucleus, it, it stays on my mind and I persevere to achieve every time I get a fragment and I do a fracture, it must be complete before I proceed. This, uh, I think this is a, a, an important advice for uh, beginner surgeons, because if not, you end up with a nucleus looking like a, a semi-cut uh, onion with many fragments uh, brought toge together by the, the, 
the post a posterior plate that is difficult to fracture and you have to separate the fragments uh, a lot to achieve fracture to move and to make difficult maneuvers and sometimes you risk it, it this poses a risk of uh, pc rent Like, there is a there is an instrument made by, made by device, uh, devised by Dr. Sohel from India that is very similar to the uh, Jacobovich chopper. It's only larger, and uh, the design is very very similar. They developed it independently uh, uh, in an independent way. But uh, I think this is a, a, let's say, I would recommend. I didn't show any video because I, I, I don't have it. And in Brazil, we have a very difficult time when, uh, let's say, importing um, uh, instruments from abroad because the instrument must be registered at our regulating agency for you to get it. Because if not, it will get stuck in customs and you will not, uh, you'll not be able to do it. And I was recently in India, but wasn't able to purchase uh, this one. So it was a party that I didn't, uh, let's say, foresee that and uh, arrange it for me, arrange it that I would be able to get it when I went to you. So I would like very much to test it, but Dr. Sohel was in contact with me. He wanted to send me some, and I told, please don't send because I, it will get stuck in, in, in customs. So I, I'm looking to for a, a, a different way to get it. And I think this is, if you, I don't know which manufacturer make it, I, I don't know, uh, in India, but I think it's much more easily uh, achieved by you uh, in India. And it works in the same way as the Jakobovic chopper. Maybe you can get it uh, designed at your own place by a manufacturer who can supply at your place. That can be an idea. Oh, yes. Well, you know, <laughs> manufacturers are very uh, resistant to making different things because for them, if they're the, uh, let's say, the, the number of sales of instruments is not great, they 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 really are resistant to that that's why uh, almost always when there is some uh, when we invent something uh, only local manufacturers make it and uh, are let's say inclined to make it i uh, some uh, european uh, manufacturers have been in contact with me but uh, they always say, oh, no, the uh, regulations here are very tough and they are very disencouraged because of regulations also, not only by the, 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 the number of sales, because different instruments are, let's say, unusual instruments sell too little. Not many uh, ophthalmologists are, let's say, are sometimes interested or are going to. So it's, uh, it's something that... Uh, uh, it's not easy, but uh, I have many instruments that I make myself. I'm, uh, let's say, I'm planning to uh, implement a uh, surgical atomic instrument factory. I have all the equipment and uh, many of the things I use, I make myself. I have a CNC lathe, CNC mills and everything, and I make it myself and with uh, an employee, but I'm not uh, yet... Uh, going commercially with com uh, in a commercial let's say official way let's say in it because uh, of time constraints by me i don't have time to work in that so i have to go slow but uh, then i would be able to provide anything that i invent and I, I, even others i wouldn't be hampered by that if if it was only going to sell at 10 or 15, I would make it because I love doing different things. So I would encourage them to send their designs for me and I would make it. We have one more question in the chat box. They are asking you about the experience about the endothelial cell count post uh, operating a brown or black hat Yes. Yeah. So it is, it is very surprising uh, with these techniques, how little 
loss you you have so uh, it uh, it usually in my experience is not in a higher percentage of loss comparing to uh, softer cataracts so i think these techniques are very safe and we can see uh, it's not uh, it's not easy to uh, be able to perceive this in the video when you're operating especially uh, i nowadays only operate with a, a 3d uh, operating system the ingenuity system where you have a, a very a wonderful depth of field and uh, uh, let's say you have you are able to perceive the ovd coating the endothelium you are able to uh, very precisely judge what distance you are from the telium. So you notice that you are operating very deep in the eye, much deeper than it seems on the video, usually on a, a 2D visual, usually. And you, can, you notice that the, the OVG layer and the bubbles uh, just inside uh, under the, the endothelium are not disturbed in any way. So if you have your machine parameters very well adjusted and you have good footwork on the foot width, you, you end up with not a great amount of ultrasound being delivered. So if you use pre-chopping or mechanical fracturing techniques to achieve the fracturing, you, you end up with a very efficient use of ultrasound. So these eyes don't suffer too much, and uh, um, it's uh, it's amazing. Of course, this can vary a lot, but uh, if you follow some guidelines in, uh, let's say, preventing uh, fragments from going up and everything else, you 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 are very safe performing surgery in these eyes. I think the the zonules. When the zonules are compromised, you have a much more difficult time controlling your what you do. And I, I, I always say, uh, cataract surgery is all about control. You must be in control of what you're doing or of what is happening. And when you have compromised zonules, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very challenging. And uh, you sometimes have to be able to use some device like a CTR or CTS or anything or capsule capsule hooks to be able to perform safely perform surgery in this eye. So it's uh, for me it's a bigger issue than a lower endothelial count. But some, uh, of course, SICS is much more predictable in let's say doing a uh, heart cataract surgery uh, safely than FACO. FACO in these cases is a little more uh, depending on the surgeon experience is uh, a little more unpredictable un unpredictable because sometimes the surgeon can't achieve a good nucleus fracture and things go are going down um, after that. Your point, and uh, it all it's, it's basically not going too close to the endothelium, putting the viscoat. And but when the zonules are loose, that, that is something which you have to take care of, and that becomes a, a difficult situation. Uh, so yeah. now we have one by uh, Dr. Kaushik on the chat box it's how to avoid chatter in heart cataracts. Yes, that's uh, something that uh, usually uh, machines that don't have a uh, torsion or, or uh, elliptical ultrasound uh, this is a, a, sometimes a big issue and what you do you have to modulate your ultrasound so you have you have many ways of doing it you must you can have posted ultrasound you can use uh, uh like uh, uh the oh my i forgot the name the well the I can't remember now because I haven't been using that for a long time, but you have ways of modulating your ultrasound uh, so that the, ultras the ultrasound is not going continuously and you give time for the chip to ma maintain the ultrasound or for it to come back uh, uh, on the, uh, to the chip 
so that you don't have chatter. Chatter is usually the result of a, a bad, let's say, combination of fecal power and uh, vacuum, and also, more importantly, aspiration uh, level. So I you think, I think usually you have trying to... to remember pulse mode. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't hear, sorry. I think you were remembering pulse mode. Yes, posted mode, and uh, I, I don't remember the, the other one. Is uh, you have a different with this mode, you have a, a, you are applying it as you step on the pedal. You diminish the time between yes. the uh, the 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 ultrasound application, and you lengthen the 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 time the the duration of the of the application. Uh, I it comp yeah burst mode I have seen yeah the burst mode I I saw in the chat that's right and um, well there are many ways and many machines have other kind types of uh, modulating this ultrasound so uh, uh, usually uh, you have uh, as I said some uh, let's say simpler machines have more problem where you have more less a uh, way of dealing with that with now with uh, modern machines most modern machines are you you really can uh, be very proficient with that i strongly favor torsional ultrasound because you the followability of the the nucleus piece in the, the fecal tip is wonderful because you don't have the uh, let's say the the movement of the tip like that it moves in an oscillating way and uh, in a different direction so that you have a, a you can apply very high power ultrasound in this way without having much chattering so but uh, uh, yeah the surgeon must be able to learn how to uh, circumvent that if you're if you're having too much chatter lower ultrasound uh, make uh, the 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 aspiration a little more uh, efficient and you're changing parameters to achieve a, a good uh, relation between them now we can have uh, some tips from dr can you your tip? Okay, I would like to you with your experience shares on heart attacks. So, I Dr. Nito, I... as you told uh, about, yeah, please continue what you were trying to say. Um, I think my connection is 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 bad right now. I I, I completely missed what you said. Can you can you can you say it so, again, uh, please? I'm sorry, Professor Rajesh, sir, for your kind uh, tips for managing heart cataracts, Rajesh, sir. The network, mine was also not that great, so that's why I had to put it off. Um, see, uh, most of the things Dr. has very nicely pointed out, uh, a couple of things that we have been following is that when we have a heart cataract, uh, the basic idea is to weaken the center core, to, to create a deep crater. So that helps us to chop the uh, nucleus easily. That is one. Um, uh, a couple of other things can also be done. You can just drill it and make one crater or two crater, anything by which you can break it. Uh, another thing is that uh, uh, I use a sharp and long chopper to, uh, for uh, hard cataracts. Dr. Nito was also mentioning that. So uh, that is really useful. Then uh, the third thing, apart from all these, you have to break the routinium. So, uh, I use uh, 
is viscose for corrosion, dead material for, for protecting the endothelium. Uh, and of course, um, if needed, uh, uh, I mean, it depends. Mostly I use torsional, but uh, uh, at times if needed, then I may use the longitudinal fake walls because it's very hard. And uh, I mostly do FACO in most of my cases uh, of uh, um, all sorts of hardness. I prefer doing FACO. That is one. And um, I guess these are some of the things that we have to do a little bit more that maybe uh, the size of capsular excess will be a little more than maybe I'll go for a, a little larger capsular me uh, capsular excess than uh, a routine uh, case that is another point that uh, I would like to add here uh, and I think uh, yes chopper does the trick in most of the cases so you should have a good chopper sharp chopper this is what I prefer very well. The central core. It's a hard central core. You have to eat it up. You have to weaken it. So that, that's how you you can break the posterior plate. So by uh, for weakening the central core, I create a deep crater. Then chop the nipples. Yes, these are, are very useful, wonderful considerations. I think there are many aspects in heart cataracts that the surgeon must be attentive to. And uh, uh, like we said, it's um, like phaco surgery, heart cataracts can be very unpredictable. And so the surgeon must be prefer prepared to and must be uh, proficient in many techniques and many maneuvers and many ways to deal with a hard nucleus like uh, many things that you said. So all the points which we could make out were having first of all a larger size of axis is really important and then and just to see uh, if the hydro is done well we can have a good rotation of the nucleus it should be free from the bag uh, the stabilization of bag should be ensured. Uh, we can have different techniques for that. Uh, using capsular hooks can be useful sometimes. And definitely uh, and doing it the surgery at the right depth is very important. So uh, taking care of the endothelium, putting viscote, and definitely the various techniques described by Dr. Nato as well as Dr. Rajesh, sir. Uh, Practitioner, uh, how do you manage an intumescent uh, but a very hard cataract uh, going from rexes onwards? Practitioner. <clears throat> Hi. You... I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, could you repeat the question, please? I'm sorry. The uh, question uh, intumescent? was... Uh, brown cataract, but it is also intumescent, where it is it has pressure on the anterior capsule. Any okay. tips for managing such cases? Yes, there are. Uh, well, I uh, there are many techniques they use it to address intumescent cataracts, and uh, uh, the one that I think that it's the most uh, predictable one and even easier is. Uh, before doing the rex is performing the liquefied cortex aspiration, if there is any. Usually you have, uh, uh, the way I do it, I, uh, I, I couple the needle into the aspirating, uh, uh, the aspirating uh, way, line of the, the FACO machine with, let's say, cortex aspira uh, aspiration parameters and uh, I aspirate the liquefied cortex and at the same time tap the nucleus down a little so as to release the posterior uh, part of the capsular back pressure because that's a big issue in these cases. So when you tap the nucleus down, the inner nucleus down inside the capsular bag, the posterior uh, liquefied cortex comes forward and then you equalize the, the 
the, the pressure and you have no risk of uh, a, a, a capsular tear. And after that, I make the axis and uh, this, uh, it's very, let's say, I would say that the most common case where you have an intumescent cataract, which uh, let's say uh, it's, it, it, it's not, uh, it usually don't pose a problem of, uh, let's say, risking a, a, a radio tear, an uncontrolled tear, but uh, it's the Morganian cataract. You have liquefied cortex and a very hard nucleus inside. This is the most common case where you have, a, 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 let's say, a sort of uh, overpressure inside the bag and a, a very hard part. This, uh, this cataracts can be very challenging. I don't know if you were asking about this specific type, but what I do is instead of making a, a let's say a bigger axis. I make a, like a, a at most a five millimeter one, so that I can. It's easier for me to keep all the nucleus fragments inside the bag, and then uh, usually instead of completely dividing the nucleus first and then going to emulsify, I separate it in uh, let's say in a uh, you know, I, I separate a piece uh, i make a fracture separate a piece and then i emulsify so that i have a large fragment that stays inside the bag and i can work the the fragment the fracture fragment uh uh separated if i do the fra the, the fragmentation uh, before previously you have some difficult controlling the fragments because they are uh, loose inside the bag. And then you risk uh, getting the capsule, get, uh, when and some surge happens, the capsule is free to come forward to the tip. So I address it in a different way. I don't know if that was what you're asking. Yeah, very rightly said. That's what we were asking. That's what was the question. So uh, let's have some inputs from uh, Dr. Pratyush for the intermittent hypermature and for the harder cataracts. What ed extra can you give uh, Dr. Pratyush, please? Hi, I generally, you know, <clears throat> there are three ways you can tackle a high intralenticular pressure cataract. One is you have a manitol beforehand that reduces a lot of pressure of post and things like that. Second, as Dr. Nito suggested, uh, central nidral aspiration, tapping the nucleus, taking all liquefied cataracts out. And third uh, is uh, when, a, when you are making a rexis, and I generally use a ear, uh, a bud on the other hand. So if the rexis is running out, I just press around 3.5 mm from the limbus that area is the, the your ciliary muscle area and that relaxes the zonules and you know if 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 there is a tendency to go out it you can generally arrest it there and then bring it back and fourth obviously is little drastic but sometimes if there is a lot of up thirst if, during surgery you're getting you know very shallow interior chamber then i do a vitreous tap and that settles most of the cases and that's how I tackle these hard cataracts uh, with, I mean, small high lenticular pressure. Very well said. What else, Dr. Kaushik? I would request you to uh, give your inputs and, and definitely. Uh, I think we had a, I think we had a great discussion. Uh, I thank Dr. Neto for accepting our invitation and it was a great talk. The surgeries were wonderful. That only shows the expertise you have and the number of cases you have done. Sir, we are actually grateful to you for sparing your valuable time with us. Uh, I must thank Professor Rajesh Sinha, who is, has, has been my teacher and Sir has graced us with, her, with his presence. Uh, I thank Dr. Pratyush Ranjan for arranging this uh, contact with Dr. Neto so that we had an, a wonderful meet. I thank Dr. Manasnath for his 
excellent inputs, Dr. Ganesh and Dr. Mayang for their excellent moderation. I thank all the audience for staying up so late. And I hope that it has been useful to you. And actually, I learned many new things, specifically the instruments which uh, Dr. Neto showed. They are wonderful, but mostly not available with most of the Indian surgeons. We'll definitely look at it and we'll try to procure some of them and try it once. Thank you. Uh, with a permission from Dr. Neto and Professor Rajesh Sina, uh, we can conclude. Thank Sir? you. Thank you. Thanks, Kaushik. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to be here. It was <laughs> Sorry, very Neto. good to see some of you I met in India when I was in uh, November, October and November, and I hope to uh, return to India soon so we can be together again. Thank you for sure. the kind invitation. It was uh, wonderful to be here with you. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, uh, Bye -bye. thank you, sir, for your presence. Uh, and it was a wonderful, wonderful uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.